David at Chicago Music Exchange. I'm here with uh, Blood Lemon. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that is correct. And that's it. <laughs> that's who we are. There they are. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's going to get weird, Lisa. <laughs> I love you. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay. Instant connection, right? <laughs> so Lisa. Yes. Melanie. Correct. Yep. Lindsay. Yes. All right. I have some questions here. I wrote Sweet. them down. Cause Sweet. Okay. Introduce yourselves check <laughs> what do you think are what do you think the coolest thing about being in a three piece is um i love that we get to individually be more involved musically because in a three piece you have like so much different spaces to fill so you can get really creative that way and i think it's really fun to write music in that sense of like confining yourself to three separate voices you know um, so it's been really fun to figure out how that fits together and who inhabits what space at what time. And it's kind of this push and pull, you know, it's much more of a push and pull as a three piece. Tension and release. Yeah, exactly. Always. Nice. Yeah. Always. <laughs> I, I like 
I like playing in a trio. It's great. Yeah. I like, I was playing with two men before. I like playing in this group with all women. Like, it's a different dynamic. Mm. And, and that's something that I really appreciate having played music for a really long time. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I think it's really cool that among the three of us, we're able to create such a big sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I don't know if I would expect that, I guess. Yeah. It's so big, but. Yeah, yeah it's big. Because, <coughs> Lisa, I thought you were playing, I, I mentioned this earlier, I thought you were playing in stereo with two amps. But you've got, you've got, some, you've got some cool kit going on over there, some, some, some double delay, and I see. I see it. It's cool. It's <laughs> yeah, we're kind of also based, like, within simplicity, too, like, mm-hmm. as you know as involved as we are as players um we kind of like to have our setup just as simple as we can have i it. like being able to carry my own shit in <laughs> yeah and like that's the thing yeah. too is you know when you're touring yourself you know you want to simplify those things i've i've done it before i've had huge ass bass cabs and it's just when you're Big touring for a long time A10, yeah it's just VT not head. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I toured with a uh, like eighties uh, Fender Twin Two that weighed probably eighty pounds. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, I could carry it, yeah. but They're it brutal. wasn't good for me to yeah. do that. It wasn't good for anybody to be carrying that yeah. thing <laughs> upstairs yeah. to the venue. Yeah. And- <laughs>
other bands outside of this band? Correct. Yeah. You're in. I'm in Built to Spill as well. Bragger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, internet? <laughs> comments. Time to comment. Get behind those keyboards, people. I want to hear it. Okay. So you're doing Built to Spill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here. Okay, and what mm-hmm. are you doing? Well, my other projects aren't really active now, but I played in a band called Finn Riggins for, uh, from like 2006 to 2013-ish. What you got going on? Uh, I'm in a band called Tambalka. It's like Tambalka? A- Tempalka, yeah, it's a modern Mediterranean groove band. Cool, but it's more for like gigging, like, yeah. You so. all have had a lot of success, it seems. I mean, a lot of bands have been around for a long time and haven't accomplished what you've been able to do in such a short amount of time. I mean, but you've been, you've kind of been rooted in your other projects. But mm-hmm. what? I mean, I think I know the answer to it. But what do you think is, you know, uh, what do you think the success is due to? I I feel like Lisa's like it's me. <laughs> no, I, I, I would not. Well, no, um, I would say like uh, as musicians, we came into the project like with uh, with more maturity than maybe I've gone into other projects, which Same. is super helpful for sure. And we we've been um, pretty in tune with like what our goals are and what we want to accomplish. And um, yeah. can I stop you there? Yeah. Did you have those? You you did. You had these conversations like, this is what we want to do. Here are boundaries, I guess. Yeah, or, and here are our expectations. Are, yeah, ongoing, ongoing tell me, conversations. Tell me about that. Because yeah. I, I don't think a lot of people think about that in terms of bands. They think, you know, they don't realize that bands are right. actually working and thinking and being yeah. totally. pragmatic right. and, and, you know, uh, granular about things. Yeah. Well, I think, like, we were open to outside advice, too. You know, like, we, we worked with um, other people to release our album to get it in front of as many people as possible um i think also we don't have like these grandiose goals that are unachievable Mm -hmm. but we also like i know mel and i toured before and we know what it actually looks (laughs) like when you go out on the road yeah when you hit the ground hard you know and sometimes Um, sometimes it's worth it sometimes it's not you got you got to be able to work smarter not harder what's the bad part of, of being on the road Um, What's the ugly side of it look like? Well, I mean, I always say to everybody, it's the best and worst time of your life. You know, it's (laughs) like you are absolutely going to have so much fun and you're going to meet people and you're going to get to do your art. And that's fucking great. Right. Like that's that's the dream. But then you're also going to be like, am I going to get a shower today? Where am I sleeping? Mm -hmm. Did I get to sleep? Mm -hmm. Is there. Right. And, you know, there's so much, there's only so much you can do when you get yourself in front of a bunch of DIY spaces, you yeah. know, and then branching out and trying to go a step further, step up um, at better venues and um, with better or more expensive production costs, you know. In the grand scheme of things, shit happens. And yeah. you just have to be able to roll with the fucking punches. Yeah, like, if you can't totally. roll with it, then you're going to have a terrible time yeah. and that's mm-hmm. going to be on you because you're choosing it. Like, yeah, and it's not like sure. I don't have a bad day. It's that like, I can go, wow, I feel really fucking grumpy today. And then I say it and then I get over that shit. Yeah.
are your favorite bands right now? <laughs> no particular order. Ooh, I love uh, this question because you can name drop and hmm. Lindsay's like, oh, I'm going to make this good. I it's going to be some rare drummer. <laughs> um, I'm... You, go ahead. <laughs> Um, Mine's bands that we've been playing with are so great. Like Vision Video is fantastic. Right. Um, there's Vision another video. band, um, Itchy Kitty. I love these guys. They're from Spokane. Um, we played with them uh, for Built to Spill. And then my friends in Prism Bitch are amazing. They're from Albuquerque. That is the best name. It is. Ever. It is. Prison Bitch. <laughs> Pri- I want to meet y'all. Pri- no, no, Pri- Prism. Prism. Prism Bitch. bitch. Oh. <laughs> Keep with an M. internet with an M. <laughs> <laughs> Get, well, guess what? I just started a band called Prison Bitch, and now you all—it's done. You can't oh my trademark. God. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. Good luck with that. Uh, okay. So what else do I got? I got to write this stuff down because otherwise I'll forget it. Uh, I, I, is rock and roll dead? What? I feel like that's a very <laughs> what kind of question is that's that? <laughs> It's rock and roll dead. No. <laughs> nope. So this is going to be a fill in the blank. Ooh. Okay. I'm ready. If you like blank, you'll like Blood Lemon. <clears throat> oh, there was actually a write-up that we got um, that said, if you if you have Sleep and Slater Kinney next to each other in your record collection, you'll like Blood Lemon. Oh, I like that. That's good. If you like eating biscuits at diners in the middle of the night, you will like Blood Lemon. <laughs> All right. If yeah. you like black lipstick, if you like cats. who cats. Okay, here we go. <laughs> A world without reverb and delay is... Stop it. No. No. What, is what it? would we do with our vocals? Come on. If you were handed a Cinnabon with raisins in it, you would... Ask where it came from before I ate it? <laughs> but you would eat it. So that's a, that's a vote with, for wait, raisins. What was the, what's in that? If what's you were that? handed a Cinnabon... Was it, is it warm? Like, is it hot? It can be warm. It can be if cold. If it's hot? It's perfect except the raisins. The raisins. Who she cares? Raisins. Yeah. So that's a yes. No, Not by I don't like raisins. But I'm sorry, Lindsay. Do I look like I wouldn't eat it? Come on, you'd pick out the raisins. <laughs> Lindsay would pick out the raisins. Maybe. <laughs> I'd Maybe probably just eat it. All right, last question, Oasis question. Liam or Noel? Neither. I fucking have no idea how to tell them apart. Internet. <laughs> I've done it again. I've knocked it out of the park. Clearly, one of the best interviews that's ever been done on YouTube, ever. I mean, it's the, you know, it's just kind of obvious. So, what do you do, right? It's hard to be me. Peace. Oh, wait, look at home. I just did that. Oh, weird. Hold on. Is this the weirdest interview you've ever done? No. Are you freaked out? Nope. I'm going to say yes. Not even close. <laughs> See? Not even close. It's not? No. Nope. Well, how can I get it weirder? I don't know. All right, thank you. <laughs> Chicago Music Exchange. Have a good day.